My coverage of Computex 2017 is brought to you by Be Quiet, Cable Mod, Vertigear, and EVGA. Go ahead and check out the links below for more info. All right, guys, we're at the Gigabyte booth, or the suite, Taipei 101. Check it out. Wait, is audio recording? Yeah, we're good. All right, just, 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 just roll it. We're going. All right, look at this, X299 motherboards. This is all I care about. Pretty sweet, right? So we've got the uh, the Aorus line up here. This is the Gaming 3. Sort of your more basic entry-level model. Let's say you don't want all the bells and whistles. Then you might want to opt for this, especially if you're, if you're just looking for straight up X299 and, you know, maybe Core, well, Skylake X or KB Lake X support right out of the box. This is what you want. You don't want to spend a ton on a motherboard. I've surveyed you guys in the past, and you're like, we don't want to spend more than $200 on a motherboard, which I completely agree. And while I cannot confirm or deny price, guarantee you this is going to be one of the cheaper boards in the X299 lineup from good old Gigabyte. So that being said, you still get some really nice base features here. Obviously, you get quad-channel memory support, um, support for the latest Skylake X, KB Lake, KB Lake X processors. One, two, three, four, five PCIe Gen 3 uh, slots right there, especially these, these two kind of nice uh, little reinforced ones with the LEDs. That's kind of a nice touch. Nice little LED on the chipset heatsink as well. And if we look at the middle of the motherboard, we get a pair of M.2 NVMe SSD slots right there, uh, which uh, we're going to talk more about in a little bit. And down here, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, a digital LED header. So if you wanted to connect an addressable LED strip, you could easily do so. That seems to be the latest craze these days. Addressable LEDs, kind of like what we've seen with the NZXT Hue Plus, just being able to uh, really have a lot more customization features and uh, signals being sent to the LEDs so that they're not all having to conform to each other. But you have a lot more more fun effects to play with. Going down the line here, we have the Gaming 7. You can see that this one's a little bit more lit AF, bruh. There's a bunch more lighting zones. Uh, you actually get uh, this nice little uh, chipset um, heatsink upgrade or this little plate here, you can remove that, and you can sort of customize the logo that you want here. If you're a modder, for example, I'm sure some system integrators will have their own version of this. You get one, two, three, four, five PCIe uh, Gen 3 slots, all the same as the uh, the Gaming 3. However, all of these feature RGB LEDs. You get RGB LEDs between the uh, the dim slots on the motherboard, of course. You get one, two, three M.2. You can see that these two are pretty much the same as we saw in the Gaming 3, but the third one actually has a heat sink. It's got, it's got this metallic plate here with some thermal pads underneath for additional cooling. I was talking to Matt from Gigabyte, and he was saying that they did some testing on the 960 Pro for uh, Samsung NVMe SSD. Within four minutes without the heatsink, it was throttling. And then they actually put the heatsink back on, and it went for 24 hours straight with no throttling whatsoever. So that's a, that's, that's a good proof of performance right there. But of course, we're going to see some more uh, reviewers, perhaps myself, even do some more in-depth thermal testing. But there you have the Aorus Gaming 7. Let's mosey on over to the Gaming 9 really quick. And this is sort of the, uh, the flagship motherboard, X299, on the Gigabyte side of things. You get all the same lighting zones um, and all the same basic features. I, I did want to mention that on the Gaming 7, uh, it does also have a USB 3.1 Type-C header, which the Gaming 3 does not have, so bear that in mind. Additionally, you also get uh, all the same features that we saw before, but look, now you get uh, these M.2 heat sinks on all three of your M.2 slots. As far as audio is concerned, you actually get the highest sound fidelity with the Gaming 9. It's a small step down with the Gaming 7 and the base version of that uh, audio chip with the Gaming 3. Now, the fourth motherboard here is the X299 Aorus Ultra Gaming, which is actually sort of an interesting position right in between the Gaming 3 and the Gaming 7. So you'll see it's just as lit, uh, literally, um, as the Gaming 7 is. So pretty much all the same LED zones, except for the audio solution. This is actually still rocking the same audio solution as the Gaming 3, so not quite the, the same fidelity as the 7 or 9. And it's also lacking the, uh, the LED feature cover, the LED plate over the audio chip as well. You also get three M.2 slots with one uh, heatsink included, whereas on the Gaming 3, you only get two, uh, as I mentioned earlier. And you also are getting that same sort of uh, customizable chipset if you're uh, perhaps a modder or feeling like just making this more of your own. This is the last board that I want to talk about. This is the X299 UD4, and this board is super special because it's basically a Gaming 3 board with none of the frills. I think this is going to appeal to a lot of us who don't really care about the gaming-centric features. We don't care about RGB LEDs. We just want a board that doesn't look like, like terrible, that isn't going to cost us an arm and a leg. Because at the end of the day, what this is really about here, folks, and what we're, I, I feel like most of us are excited, including myself, is just being able to support a Skylake X or a KB Lake X processor. So for those of us who are just looking to get on the new uh, Intel HED T platform, this might be a really great option for not too much money. So you can see none of the L RGB LEDs, the, uh, the, uh, the rear I.O. cover is just completely gone. If you're just trying to build a system for performance, this is really for the 
the purest in all of us. So you can bet your bottom dollar that this is going to be the cheapest X299 board in Gigabyte's lineup. Of course, I can't confirm pricing at this moment, but I've been informed by the Gigabyte staff that uh, June 19th is when we're going to be able to pre-order these boards, and that's also when we're going to find out exactly how much they cost. So keep your eyes out for that.